Hi and welcome to yet another episode. What we've got here is Nigel Mansell's World Championship for the Amiga. It says in the box Amiga 500, 600 and compatibles. Now for me, I'm hoping that's for the 1200 as well. I know that there was two versions that were brought out. There was the 500 stroke 600 version and then there was a 1200 version. And even in fact, if I remember correctly, one of the many packs that they did for the 1200 actually had Nigel Mansell on it and I think it was um, Trolls on the other game that they gave away at the time with that well they say gave away but you know what I mean it was in box um, for me though what I wanted this for was to be able to give this game a go really obviously um, inside it seems that there's a manual and the one big thing that it, I wanted this for was the free wheel, the Logic 3 free wheel. I had seen this oh so many years ago on Bad Influence when I was a kid, but then last year I was reminded of that by watching Nostalgia Nerd's uh, video on this very game and the wheel and everything. Um, and then I completely forgot about it. And then I saw it on Twitter that someone was mentioning it um, yet again uh, last week or so. I'll put a picture up about now to prove that it did actually have a conversation about it. And so I decided, right, that's it. I want to get it. So I have done. So we'll put this game to the side. As you notice, though, that before I do, the discs actually say 500, 600 and 1200. As I said before, it seemed to be that there's discs out there that say 500 stroke 600. And then there's discs out there that say Amiga 1200. Um... This being a GBH gold release, this means it got released later and I'm kind of hoping they've just squished it all on the same discs and it makes no difference in the long run. Now I have also noticed it doesn't seem to be a code wheel but in the manual it also doesn't mention the code wheel. Now I did have a sneaky peek at that earlier on today before starting this video but what I've not had a sneaky peek at is this, the Logitech 3 freewheel. Now the difference for me between what I'm hoping I'll be able to show you and talk about in part two of this video is uh, what Nostalgia Nerd couldn't do because he happened to have the digital version. That's nothing against him or anything like that, he just he happened to have hold of the digital version. Now of course the digital version means it probably works in a lot more games because it is digital. but trying to use a steering wheel in games that weren't especially programmed for the idea that you're yanking your hands around um, probably doesn't come off so well um, but this Nigel Mansell game does say get yourself a free wheel sort of thing and so did the advert back in the magazine and everything like that I don't have a copy of that so I'm not uh, I can't show you that in any way but as I said this is the analog version it does say check software compatibility before purchase how are you supposed to do that in the shop? I don't know, because obviously back then it tended to be in shop, so you probably had to ask the person behind the counter who may or may not know in Dixons. Anyway, the free wheel it mentions here, the free wheel analog steering wheel is connected to the same game port as the analog joystick. Tilting the wheel forward or backwards has the same effect as moving the joystick forward or backwards. Rotating the wheel left and right has the same effect as moving the joystick left to right. Remember, whenever free wheel is tilted in any direction, it has the same effect as moving the joystick in that direction. This should be kept in mind when booting up software or making menu selections. It is best to rest the free wheel in the upright position when plugged into the computer and not in active use. The built-in button functions in the same way as the fire buttons on an analog joystick or yoke when plugged into the computer. Like a real steering wheel, only small, smooth movements are normally required. Freewheel will only operate correctly with a computer equipped with a suitable games port providing analog routines. Please check the software instruction manual. Oh, some oxygen. Right, let's take this out of the box and see if everything's there and see if a dog's chewed it up and all that sort of palaver. Probably hasn't, but you'd never know. So let's take it out. Oh, a whole lot of cable. There we go. Put this box to the side. And lift this up and then pull out yet more cable. Oh, it's 
never ending. There we go. Get more cardboard. Right, so here we go. So what's that? About six foot? Nearly two meters worth of cable maybe? As standard really for a joystick of its age. As you would expect. Cheap plastic, but not super cheap, but you know, sort of normal joystick feel to it. No real weight, you know, it's nothing to it at all really. Um, not that you expect that, you would, you'd want it quite light because you want to be able to put up with holding it out in front of you. I can see why Nostalgia Nerd in his video says that you could do with getting your elbows up on the table. Because yeah, that out in front of you for quite some time and not being able to rest, say like when you're driving in a real car or something, you know, not being able to rest up against it. So yeah, I can see that tiring off a period of time, but we'll see. Doesn't sound like micro switches. That's a bit of a shame. I may open this up after we've got it going and seeing if it actually works. Because as I say, this is the first time of using it. So in part two of this video, you'll find out along with me if it works or it doesn't. And do I have to complain to the seller? Hopefully I've still got enough time to do so. If I do, if it's broken, it's broken. It wasn't exactly that expensive. Um, it's obviously being used though, because it's got a few little scuff marks here and there. But if there was only sort of the one game that someone's bothered to buy it for, maybe they just got bored with it, because maybe someone did buy it, because they did buy the 1200 along with the game. So let's put that to the side. Hopefully it doesn't all start crashing down. And then the next box, and this is the uh, quality joystick, so QJ foot pedal, the SV129. Seems to, the box has seen better days by the looks of it, but what do you expect for something from the 90s? It's not gonna be mint, is it? Well, it might be, but unlikely. So it seems to have lived a life of being banged around. Oh, took it upside down. Actually says up here in the box here, 15th of September, 1992. I'm assuming that's when they slapped it inside a cardboard box. Let's have a look at the sides of the box. There's barcode, nothing of interest, nothing of interest really apart from the normal spiel of what's inside the box is wonderful. Anyway, so here's the instructions. There did seem to be a piece of paper somewhere. Yeah, there's a piece of paper there, but the instructions are on the, the box. And enhance your home video games with the arcade-like foot pedal control. Transfer any three functions from the joystick to the foot pedal. Excellent for car racing, flight simulation, tennis, Kung Fu, etc. Kung, Kung Fu and tennis? What are you going to do with that? Oh well. Industrial standard micro switches and extra durable body design. And then it explains how to set it up. But it seems just basically just flick the switches across to what you want to replace. We'll have a look at that on the uh, pedals themselves. But it's easy enough. I don't think you really need instructions at all. But of course they put them there for some silly people who would say, oh, does it work? But it is explained there. And then it says, for use with all Atari computers, including the ST, Commodore 64, 128, VIC-20, Amiga, Amstrad, the Schneider, I think that's how you pronounce that. I don't speak other languages, so please forgive me if I do absolutely ruin other languages, but I think it's Schneider, um, CPC, Spectrum, and Spectrum Plus with a suitable interface. Um, so, um, obviously, with those spectrums, you needed a, an interface at the back so that you did get so that you did get access to joysticks, and then the BBC and Electron with suitable interfaces. I remember for the BBC at least that it had the 15 pin, and you could uh, siphon that off sort of thing to two uh, nine pin ports, and you would end up having joyst a digital joystick instead. But I can't remember if it was just cables or you had to build a fancy little device. Actually, no, you did. You had to build a little device or something like that. So th since this is nine pin, you would need that, I'm assuming. So let's put that box to the side. But with that though, if you do feel like getting one of these, make sure yourself that it does actually work with your old computers. Because uh, don't take my word for it, because I haven't looked at all the information up. Because all I was interested in, does it work with the Amiga? And it does because it was all part of this Nigel Mansell type thing. Let's get Nigel Mansell discs out of the way. 
take it out of this plastic bag, rustle, 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 a bit of cardboard's fallen off. I'm assuming that was protecting that bit. Again, let's get that out of the way. Let's have a look at this bit of paper before we look at the pedals. I'm assuming it's the instructions. Yes, it is, and it's instructions in two of the languages by the looks of it. Which ones, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe for the people out there that know more languages than I do. But as I said, it's sort of, it doesn't really matter. If you know how to set an Amiga up in the first place, I'm sure you can figure these switches out. Or any computer up, really. Let's have a look here. These flap out. The cable doesn't really look like it's ever been used, amazingly. There is some white powder coming off from somewhere. Don't know where that's coming from, but hopefully... Well, let's put it this way. Let's hope that's not some uh, LSD or whatever when you see from... What was that video we saw recently? I say we, but I'm sure lots of people have seen it, that the guy was uh, redoing some old, uh, very old 1960s music equipment and they ended up getting high from the strange crystal or something that they happened to come across. So, look out for my Twitter to see if that does anything to me in an hour's time. Hopefully not. But I doubt it. I think it's just some paint or something from outside the cardboard box. Because it's not the sort of thing for me because it's not the sort of thing I do. Anyway, let's open this up. So it's got the switches and then it says joystick one, two, three. And this is button one, two, and three. It says it just there, there, and there. A bit strange that it's on the left hand side of the pedal there, and then on here they do it on the right hand side. Okay, whatever. That's someone else's design mistakes or problems, or does it really matter? Probably not. Anyway, and obviously yellow, orange, and green. Just in case you are colour blind, I don't know what people are out there. But um, it says it has a circle and then a tiny circle um, and part on sort of like the points of a compass. So you've got forward or up, depending on how you want to describe it. And then you can flick a squat from the switches of joystick one, two, and three. So forward, we probably want the right pedal because that's probably accelerator. So let's flick that across. Um, left and right, we probably can just leave because we want the steering wheel to do it. This is the backwards or down. Um, that's probably this one for the brake. I've never played this game, uh, this Nigel Mansell game, so how, it, how it's actually set up uh, in there, I'm not sure. I'm just going by, normally you have accelerator, brake and clutch. Um, and then left, so as I said, we'll just leave that. And then fire button, well, what would fire button be? Maybe I should just leave that to the joystick as well. But then that would only mean only two of these pedals are being used. Um, well, let's set that to one just in case one is to change gear or something like that. Maybe it's not going to get used as clutch, but maybe it should be change gear. We'll see. We can always flick them to something else if they, they're not useful like that. So, I'm excited to get this going. Obviously what I need to do is set the Amiga up in this nice little bit here and put this on the floor and have the steering wheel going and everything. Now, oh, my phone went there. So what we've got is an input and output. So that goes off to the Amiga or whichever joystick, uh, joystick whichever keyboard, but obviously for me, it's gonna be the Amiga. And then what I want to do is put the steering wheel into this so even though this is digital hopefully what it does is just pass the signals on through and I can still use analog either that it'll have to be that um, hopefully the game allows me to have uh, this in one of the joystick ports and the analog in the other port so that I get to use both of them at the same time now what I would like to do is give a shout out to um, Electron Ash for being at my latest Patron, I forgot what the word was there. Yeah, he's my latest uh, patron, that's very nice of him. And if anyone else would like to sign up, that would be great as well because every little penny helps. Um, obviously, if I'm buying things like this and whatever. Um, one thing I have done though is 
buy this. This is uh, the money that I got recently off of the Patreon, or at least I will be getting from Patreon. It still takes a while before it actually goes into my account because it has to be, I think there's a minimum amount before you can actually take any out, but on the prospect that I'll be getting money from uh, the Patreon, I bought this, and this will allow me to do this. Zoom backwards and forwards on my camera. It makes life a lot easier for me. Because at the moment the camera is actually quite high up and touching it makes it all bounce around. And what I've actually done as well is, you may have noticed in a couple of my videos when I move things around the camera bounced all over the place. That was because really all that I'd done was uh, got an arm and it was sticking out from my monitor stand. And Basically, if I banged the table, even lightly, the camera would bounce around as well. That was the best I could do at the time. Um, I've actually sorted that out now, I believe. I've got a uh, some contraptions stuck up on the walls now so that I can get this because I'm actually currently facing uh, a wall that I'm not going to put shelving on or anything like that because there's no point because I have monitors in the way. So what I want to do is have what I have set up. I'm pointing as if you can see, I keep getting confused like that, but it should be now when I bang the table, the camera doesn't bounce around. So that's being fixed and that's being fixed on the advent that hopefully the patrons will carry on sending money over the next couple of months. So they're helping out already, already. Um, if they don't, then that's their personal choice and there's no anger or distrust from me if they decide to go away again. But I really would like it if people could help me out by backing me with Patreon so that I can carry on improving these videos and bringing content to you. I also would like to thank the sudden rush of subscribers that I got um, in the past week or so. That was with a little bit of help from Electron Ash as well. Um, suddenly, I basically doubled uh, the followers that I have or the, the, scripts, the subscriptions that I have. Um, I will be, for the new people, I will be doing um, some more soldering and things. Um, I'm no expert at it, uh, but I will be taking things to bits and uh, soldering wires up and everything like that to get things to do what I want to do for the setup that I personally want to have. Um, so, again, thank you for you to turning up and subscribing. Hopefully you hang around and enjoy my videos. But for the people that have been around for quite some time as well. Thank you for sticking with me because I know there's been a couple of breaks but I really don't want to do any more breaks apart from say ill health with me or family or something like that. I really do want to keep doing this. I do want to slowly but surely make this something very worthwhile not just for myself but for other people as well. Saying all of that though as always happy gaming.